Greetings of the day students. Today I Neha Sharma have brought you a new chapter from book Moment chapter number 3rd. The title of the chapter is Ishwaran the Storyteller. It is written by R.K. Lakshmanan. So before going through the explanation of the chapter we'll look into the other some related details of the chapter like about the author introduction of the chapter and what theme this chapter contains so here as you can see first let me introduce you with the writer of this chapter you can see here he is the writer of this chapter rk lakshman or his name we can call him rasipuram Krishna Swami Ayer Lakshman, he was an Indian cartoonist, illustrator and humorist. He is best known for his creation, The Common Man. As you can see at left side, it was his famous creation, The Common Man, which used to appear in the newspaper, The Times of India. He started his career as a part-time cartoonist, working mostly for local newspapers and magazine. Okay, so this was the introduction of the writer of this chapter. Let's move ahead. Introduction. The chapter, Iswaran the Storyteller, is a story written by a famous Indian cartoonist, R.K. Lakshman. The story is about a person who has mastered the art of storytelling. His name was Iswaran. He was so good at his skills of storytelling that the listener would end up believing the story to be true. He was engaging, he was engaging and interactive with his audience. So students, this is a story about a person who has mastered the art of telling story. As we know that telling story is also an art because it includes lots of expression, lots of things like how the narrator is using uh, his ability to twist, to bring the surprises, his expression, expression so that listener is compelled to believe him so he is a kind of a person who who had all these qualities and he used to narrate the um, stories in such way that the listener has to believe his stories theme this chapter has two themes first the art of storytelling and the second one is the supernatural objects like ghosts and spirits are only a subject to our imagination. So students, this chapter has two themes. First is the art of storytelling. And the second one is the supernatural objects like ghosts, spirits are only a subject to our imagination. They are, they are not real. They are subject to our imagination. It's all about how much we think positively or negative, negatively about these objects, whether we take them as a true object or false or imaginary. So let's first understand the art of uh, storytelling. As we know that even a normal story can be made best one when the narrator presents it with some twist, turn, surprises, and by the way, he narrates it. Iswaran, a skilled story teller told gripping stories in a graphic and dramatic manner such that he his listeners listened to him in total attention and surprised okay so next is another thing is that one must not let oneself to be influenced by such unnatural objects like Mahindra he was the master of Iswaran Iswaran used to work for him as a cook but he used to believe his story he used to listen his story and he started believing in all those stories so much that he started thinking all those objects like ghosts and spirits as 
real so mahindra believed that he had seen a ghost because somewhere he started believing in ghost through the isuran story so why he started believing in ghost because it's all because of the way isuran used to tell him the stories that's why he started thinking that the ghosts and spirits are real let's start the explaining of the chapter isuran the storyteller the story was narrated to ganesha by a young man mahindra by name he was a junior supervisor in a firm which offered on higher supervisor at various type of construction sites factories bridges dams and so on so this story about isuran is narrated to ganesha it is narrated to ganesh by a young man and the name of the young man was mahindra he was a junior supervisor he means mahindra mahindra was a junior supervisor in a firm which offered on higher supervisors at various type of construction site so mahindra used to work for a firm which would provide supervisor for various construction site like factories bridges dam and so on mahindra's job was to keep an eye on the activity at the work site so what was mahindra's work to look after the work at the construction site he had to keep moving from place to place and because of his work or because of his work profile he used to move from one place to another place every now and then and like very frequently whenever the work is finished he used to move to another place as per the orders as per the orders uh, by the head office from a coal mine area to railway bridge construction site and there after few months to a chemical plants which was coming up somewhere so from where to where like one time he used to work at a coal mine and whenever the work is finished he as per the next order he would move to the railway bridge construction site and after this like he has to move after a month he used to move for a, a chemical plant to look up the construction work there he was a bachelor he he means mahindra mahindra was a bachelor his needs were simple and he was able to adjust himself to all kind of odd conditions whether it was an ill equipped circuit house or a makeshift canvas tent in the middle of a stone fury so as he was a bachelor he didn't have any responsibility toward her towards his wife children so he could easily adjust himself in given less equipped circuit house to stay or even he could live in a canvas tent which is surrounded by the heap of stones but one asset one asset he had was his cook iswaran asset means a very important thing he had a very important person he had iswaran the cook was quite attached to mahindra and followed him uncomplainingly and mahindra like iswaran was also very much attached with his master mahindra that's why he followed him he used to go to the places where mahindra would get the transfer or would get the work location uncomplainingly without any complain wherever he was posted he cooked for mahindra washed his clothes and chatted away with his master at night he would weave out weave out means used to tell or make stories endless stories and anecdotes on varied subjects so what he would do for his master he would cook for him he would wash his clothes and chatted he used to even talk in the night after work with him and that time he used to weave lots of endless stories and personal incidents anecdote means incident based on personal individuals experience 
Iswaran also had an amazing capacity to produce vegetable and cooking ingredients seemingly out of nowhere in the middle of desolate landscape with no shops visible for miles around. Means Iswaran, not even a good storyteller, he was also a very good cook. He had the capability to arrange the vegetable even uh, in such an area where there, there used to be no shop visible around for a mile and he used to even cook very well. He could arrange uh, all those things even in the uh, less populated area, less populated area. He would miraculously conjure up, miraculously conjure up means used to gather like a magic, he used to gather all those things like a magic up in most delicious dishes and he used to make uh, with those uh, things whatever available at the place, he used to make very delicious dishes with fresh vegetables within an hour of arriving at the zinc sheet shelter at the new workshop means so somehow he could able to he could uh, he could uh, arrange the vegetable even fresh vegetables and out of those he used to make very good uh, dishes mahindra would be up early in the morning and leave for work after breakfast mahindra he used to go to early in the morning for the work site working site construction site and he used to have his breakfast early in the morning only carrying some prepared food and even he used to carry some prepared food means what what we come to know about Iswaran that he used to get up before his master he used to get up in the morning he would break he would make breakfast for him and would even prepare lunch for him so that he could consume at daytime meanwhile Iswaran would tidy up the shade and meanwhile when his master used to be at work he would clean up the shade means wherever they used to stay he used to clean the place and wash the clothes and he would wash the clothes meanwhile when his master is at work and have a leisurely bath and he used to take a very long and laser and very pleasant bath pouring several buckets of water over his head and he would consume lot of water in bathing muttering a prayer all the while and he used to even say a prayer meanwhile he used to take bath he would uh, it would be lunch time by then and uh, till morning till uh, from morning till lunch time he would complete all these ta tasks and at, at lunch time after eating he would read for a while before dozing off dozing off means before taking a nap he used to read some book the book was usually some popular tamil thriller and what kind of book he used to read he used to read some tamil thriller running to hundreds of pages like hundreds of pages a very thick one its imaginative description and narrative flourishes would hold isran in thrall means he was too much too much uh, uh, have impact he uh, these nobles had a great impact on him and he was too much inspired by after reading such novels so that he could make lots of uh, stories his own description were greatly influenced by the tamil authors that he read and now you can see that by this line we can have an idea that whatever we will read it will have an impact on us the same way Isuran uh, used to read Tamil thrillers that's why he had a great influence of Tamil author on him when he was narrating even the smallest of incident he would try to work in suspense and a surprise ending into the accounts and this is the reason as he used to read the thriller um, stories he used to make some thriller exciting stories and would uh, turn up his stories into surprises some suspense and for example instead of saying that he had come across an uprooted tree on the highway. Now you can see this is a very simple line that instead of saying such simple line what he used to describe 
this he would say with eyebrows suitably arched and hands hold out a dramatic gesture the road was deserted and i was all alone suddenly i spotted something that looked like an enormous bushy beast laying sprawled across the road i was half inclined to turn and go back but as i came closer i saw that it was a fallen tree now you could have an idea that simple line how he had described a simple line that he saw an uprooted tree he used to make proper eyebrows gesture used to raise his eyebrows and then he used to say like something drastic i have seen on the road first of all i was very scared i was about to return but i did but then i con uh, and gathered my courage i went closer than i what noticed well, i noticed uh, it was a fallen tree with its dry branches spread out and all over it was lying on the uh, on the ground and all over its branches were spread it mahindra would stretched himself back in the canvas chair and listen to the isuran tale uncritically and without any uh, criticism mahindra would listen his story with lot of interest the place i come from is famous for timber timber means wood means he belongs to a place which is famous for its forest and wood iswaran would begin and this way he used to start his stories there is a richly wooded forest all around the logs are hauled on to the lorries by elephants means the log means the wood they used to pull by a great of efforts by elephants because they used to so big and heavy that only a big animal can lift them they are huge well fed beast beast means elephant the elephants were very big well fed and huge when they run when they turn wild even the most experienced mahaut is not able to control them when they used to become violent not even a trained or experienced mahaut means a person who de- who deals with elephants riding and everything even they could not the person could not control them after this prologue iswaran would launch into an elaborate anecdote involving an episode means this way he used to start a story about an elephant in this way he used to start like prologue prologue means he used to start elaborate me he used to explain his personal experience anecdote involving an elephant and how it is one day a tusker tusker means an elephant escaped from the timber yard timber yard means a place where a uh, wooden work used to be done and begin to roam about and he just escaped from there and he started roaming here and there stamping on bushes stamping means he stabbed on bushes tearing up wild creepers he tore all the wi- all the wild creepers and breaking branches at will and he deliberately started breaking breaking the branches of tree you know sir how an elephant behaves when it goes mad do you know do you have an, any idea that how an elephant behaves when he becomes mad iswaran would go so caught up in the excitement of his own story that he would get up from the floor and jump about stamping his feet and emulate emulate means copying something emulation of the mad elephant means he you you put so much involved in his narration his stories that he would stand up on the ground and he started acting like an elephant stamping on the ground the elephant reached the outskirt of our town means they reached the outer area of our town breaking the fence fence means the 
boundaries breaking the fence down like a mastic means the those strong fences they have been broken by the small mastics he would continue and this way he used to narrate his story it came into the main road and smashed all the stalls selling fruits mud pots and clothes and he started doing what he started doing breaking all those fruit selling stalls and mud pots people run halter and shelter in panic and people started running here and there without any organization like without any systematically without any planning they started running here and there halter and shelter means in a in a hurry that lacks organization the elephant now entered a school ground where children were playing breaking through a brick wall and he entered into a school through a wall and he broke the brick wall all the boys ran into the classrooms and shut the doors tight and all those all those boys who were playing in the ground he ran toward the room and closed the gate tightly the beast grunted and wandered about the beast means the elephant he was grunting and he was moving here and there pulling out the football goal post and he started destroying everything he started uprooting the goal post tearing down the volleyball net and kicking the flattening the drum capped of water uprooting the shrubs and he started uprooting the shrubs meanwhile all the teachers had climbed up to the terrace terrace means roof all those teachers they climbed up to the roof of the school building from there they helplessly watched the depredation of the elephant and they were helplessly watching the depredation means damage they were watching the damage made by elephant there was not a soul below on the ground the street were empty as if the inhabitants of the entire town had suddenly disappeared means nobody was there in the streets everybody hide hide up and uh, most of the people they they went to their terrace so that so that they could save their life and it was looking like the whole town is uh, empty nobody lives there i was studying in the junior class at that time i means iswaran he is telling his own story i was studying in the junior class at that time and was watching the whole drama from the rooftop means i was also there and i was watching in the uh, watching the whole drama from the rooftop i don't know what came over me suddenly and i don't know like he wanted to show himself as brave and courageous and he said ki i don't know what i was thinking that time suddenly i grabbed a cane cane means like a stick he grabbed a stick from the hand of one of the teacher and ran down the stairs into the open open means he went uh, into the open area ground the elephant grunted and menacingly swung a branch of a tree which it held in its trunk means what he did when elephant saw the boy means the iswaran coming he also moved toward iswaran and he threw uh, and he threw and he threw a branch of tree uh, which he was holding in his trunk it stamped its feet kicking up a lot of mud and he stamped his feet like he was ready for the war and when he stamped his feet there was a lot of mud and dust i looked frightening and obviously i was i was frightened i was it was frightening but i moved slowly toward it but still i mustered up all my courage and i moved toward elephant stick in hand and i was having the stick in my hand people were watching the scene hypnotized hypnotized means they could not keep their eyes away from me everybody was like hypnotized and nearby house stops and everybody from the house top they were looking at me the elephant looked at me red eyes like elephant was very angry he was looking me very with the red eyes ready to rush toward me and he was also ready to fight with me or to rush toward me 
it lifted its trunk and trumpeted loudly he lifted its trunk uh, trump and uh, trunk and trumpeted very loudly at that moment i moved forward and that time i moved i i didn't like i mustered up my courage and i was daring to move forward and mustering all my force mustering means gathered all my force and wet its third toenail on the quick the beast looked stunned for a moment then it shivered from the head of head to foot he and collapsed and he what he said he moved toward the elephant and he was having a stick and he hit his stone nail with that stick and the beast became very stunned he was surprised and from the same moment at the same moment he shivered with fear and he collapsed on the ground at this point iswaran would leave the story unfinished and get up mumbling mumbling means not clear uh, speak not speaking clearly at that at that moment like at the conclusion in 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 place of giving a proper conclusion to the story he would f- uh, leave the story without giving any conclusion and stan i will be back after lighting the gas and warming up the dinner mahindra who had been listening with rapt attention like at the time when everybody who would be listening the story would be eager to listen the conclusion of the story and if one left with without conclusion he would be like disturbed or looking forward to know the uh, conclusion so mahendra also left with uh, without having the conclusion and it was tot- he was totally listening the story with proper deep attention would be left hanging and that such in that situation he would feel like hanging in the middle when he returned iswaran would not pick up the thread of the thread of the story right away and when after having the dinner when they would come back iswaran would leave the story there only and he would not uh, take the story or start the story from there only mahindra would have to remind him that the conclusion was pending and then mahindra he was eager to know the conclusion and that's why he would ask him what was the conclusion of the story what happened next well a veterinary doctor was summoned a veterinary doctor means a doctor who deals with uh, animals and he was summoned he was called to revive the animal to to revive means to cure the animal iswaran will would shrug casually and he used to raise his shoulder casually two days later it was led away by its mahot to the jungle and after two days after giving a proper treatment mahot took him to the jungle well how did you manage to do it iswaran how did you bring down the beast now everybody uh, would be eager to know that how could a person can handle how, how could a person handle a big beast by just hitting a stick on his feet so mahindra was also eager to know about it it has nothing to do with japanese art like very flauntingly he used to answer the question it was nothing it was just a uh, just a japanese art i think sir karate and what he would answer karate or jujitsu it is called i had read about it somewhere it temporarily paralyzed the nervous system you see and he hit he hit the place which could help him to slow down or paralyze the nervous system of the elephant not a day passed without iswaran recounting some story packed with adventure horror or suspense means every day iswaran used to tell him a story related to some adventure horror or suspense whether the story was credible or not mahindra enjoyed listening to it because of the inimitable way inimitable means that could not be copied way in which it was told and he used to enjoy the story because of the way of narration ishwaran seems to more than make up 
for the absence of TB, TB in Mahindra's living quarters and because he was not having proper facilities he was he didn't miss TB because he had Iswaran to tell the stories with him one morning when Mahindra was having breakfast Iswaran asked can I make something special for dinner tonight sir after all, today is an auspicious. Auspicious means very pure or pious day. According to the tradition, we prepare various delicacies to, to feed the spirits of our ancestor. Like in our Indian culture, we have a pure month. We have a, a month in which we offer food to our ancestor's spirit. So he also, also asked that today is that day. Can I make the food? to offer uh, uh, the spirit of our forefathers. That night Mahindra enjoyed the most delicious dinner and complimented, he complimented, he praised Iswaran on his culinary skills like cooking skills. He seemed very pleasant but unexpectedly launched into a ghost garish account involving the supernatural. Like uh, as it was habit of Iswaran to tell a story in the night after dinner. Today, after providing a very delicious food, he started telling a ghost or ghost story or a supernatural story. So the night ended up with a garish account. Garish account means unpleasant account involving supernatural power. You know, sir, this entire factory area we are occupying was once a burial ground burial ground means graveyard he started mahindra was jugged out of the pleasant reveries he had drifted into after the satisfying meals like he was enjoying the meal and he still could feel the pleasantness or satisfaction after having such great meal and suddenly when he heard this he just he was shaken and he came out immediately I knew on the first day itself when I saw a human skull laying on the path. Even now I come across a number of skulls and bones. Iswaran continued and Iswaran how he could tell that this is a burial ground the place where they are living right now because he has seen many skulls and bones and even he can notice now and then. He went on to narrate how he sometimes saw ghost at night. I am not easily frightened by these things, sir. I am a brave fellow. But one horrible ghost of a woman which appears off and on at midnight during the full moon. It is an ugly creature with matted hair and shriveled face like a skeleton holding a fetus in its arm. And now the Iswaran started telling the story about ghost. Like what he said, okay, I'm a brave person and I'm not easily frightened with such things. But one day, what I have experienced, I'm not easily frightened by these things, sir. I'm a brave fellow. But one horrible incident happened with her, with him. And what was it? That one day he saw a horrible ghost of a woman which appears off and on like she used to come and go uh, some sometime at midnight during the full moon and what is the time full moon time it is an ugly creature and she is very horrible ugly creature with matted matted means like not uh, properly combed hair like fizzy hair and rough hair and shriveled face wrinkled face like a skeleton like she is a skeleton like totally shrinked and holding a fetus in his in its arm fetus means a baby uh, before its birth and she's holding a fetus in its arm mahindra shivered like he scared when he listened this at the description it, it the description of the lady was totally scaring at the description he shivered and interrupted rather sharply and he stopped him interrupted him rather shoutedly like are you crazy Swaran? 
there are no such things as ghosts or spirits and he denied these uh, the ex existence of these creatures it is all a figment of our imagination and what he said it's all about our imagination it's all about our imagination get your digestive system examined and better you should go to a doctor and you should consult uh, him and you should ask him to check your digestive system and maybe your head as well and you must even not even to a doctor who is going to check your digestive system you should go to a doctor who deals with brain and because you are talking like nonsense you are talking like mad you are talking nonsense you are talking rubbish he left the room and retired for the night and he that day he didn't listen to him he left to his room expecting iswaran to sulk for a couple of day and he thought k for one or two day he will be upset he will be angry but the next morning he was surprised he mahindra was totally surprised to find the cook as cheerful and talkative as ever he was not bothering about the last night incident he was happy and cheerful and even talkative from that day on mahindra for all his brave talks went to bed with a certain unease and from that particular day he became very anxious about the talks of iswaran every night he peered into the darkness and every night he used to look into the darkness outside through the window next to his bed and from where from, from uh, his next to his bed there was a window and he used to look outside trying to make sure and he was trying to make sure that there was nothing that there was no movement of dark shape in the density but he could not see uh, he could only see a sea of darkness and when he used to see out of the window he could only see total darkness with the twinkling lights of the factory miles away and what as the twinkling lights of the factory and that too very miles away he had always liked to admire the milk white landscape and earlier before this incident he was a admirer of the landscape of full moon night with lots of nights and stars and the full moon full mood, uh, moon nights but after hearing iswaran story of the female ghost he avoided looking out of the window altogether altogether when the moon was uh, was full and specially means he developed some fear when he heard about that and he could not look out of the window because whenever he used to look out the uh, out of the window to the moonlight and he started thinking about the female which was described by iswaran one night mahindra was was awoke up from his sleep by a low, low moon close to his window at first he put it down to a cat prowling round for mice so one night what happened he awoke from his sleep in the midnight because he could hear some sound mounting sound and he thought some cat is there and is searching for mice but the sound was too guttural for a cat but the sound is too loud for uh, for a cat he resisted the curiosity to look out lest he should behold a sight which would stop his heart and he was scared and he resisted he wanted to know but he controlled his curiosity so that he should not see any uh, deadly scene out there but the wailing became louder and less feline but the sound became louder and louder and it was now clear it was not of a cat sound he could not resist the temptation any more and now he could not stop himself lowering himself to the level of the window sill and he started peeping out of the window sill he looked out at the white sheet of moonlight outside and it was moon moonlight uh, night that night there was there there not too far away was a dark cloud from clutching a bundle and he saw some shape over there it was clutching something like a bundle mahindra broke into a cold sweat and fell back to the 
pillow and when he saw the scene he was totally sweating and he came back to his bed and fell back to his pillow panting and it was very heavy for him to breathe as he gradually recovered from the ghastly experience he began to reason with himself when he recovered from this deadly experience he started giving the reason to himself and finally concluded and finally he concluded that it must have been some sort of auto suggestion some trick that his subconscious had played on him and what he started because already the story of the female of the lady ghost ghostly lady already was there in his brain so might be his brain had made all these scenes and image which he has just experienced by the night by the time he had got up in the morning had a bath and came out to have his breakfast the horror of the previous night had faded from his memory and next morning when he got up he took bath he took his breakfast he almost forget about the previous night experienced it was faded iswaran greeted him at the door with the lunch packed and uh, and big bag just as mahindra was stepping out as like mahindra was uh, going to leave that place for his office stepping out iswaran iswaran grinned and said he smiled grinned and said sir remember the other day when i was telling you about the female ghost with the fetus in its arm you were so angry with me for imagining things and that when i told you about the female ghost who is who we can see uh, on moon night and she is holding a baby when she comes and you were you you became very angry well you saw her yourself last night means iswaran he knew that uh, he mahindra had seen uh, the lady last night i came running hearing the sound of moaning that was coming from your room because how i can tell because i also heard the moaning sound and it was coming from your room a chill went down mahindra's spine and he was totally uh horrified when he listened that now iswaran is also telling this he did not wait for iswaran to complete his sentence he did not wait iswaran to complete his sentence he hurried away to his office and he immediately left for his office he had it to his paper resolving to leave the haunted place the very next day and he tried to find out so that he could leave this place as soon as possible so students this was the explanation of the chapter i hope that you uh, are able to understand it properly so it's all about the imagination we create in our brain and we allow our brain to uh, to overpower us thank you students we will meet very soon with next explanation of next chapter of your book thank you